Hi everybody, this is Aitra Molina from 3D Printler here. Uh, I'm just here to show you the new upgrade that we've come up for the Replicator 2X. Uh, this is a, a rep upgrade that allows the Replicator 2X to print in PLA and you get quite nice surface quality with it and even bridging and so on. The biggest disadvantage with the Replicator 2X is that it doesn't have any cooling fan on the print so it's very hard to print in PLA without it looking very messy uh, and so on. So I'm just going to run you through what you comes in the kit. You get two fans that come with a connector installed. You get a wiring harness that the two fans can plug into and that then plugs into your replicator. You get some extended extruder bolts which you need for the installation. You get four little bolts that attach the fans to the fan ducts that we've come up to. You get the two fan ducts left and right and then you get some new spacers because the old spacers weren't the right size. So I'm going to show you how to uh, install it. It's all really simple. You can install the whole system by using just one allen key. The one that comes supplied with the kit that removes all the uh, three millimeter uh, cap screw bolts. So without further ado, I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we'll start at the top end. So we'll start at the top end with the dismantling. Uh, and the first thing that you want to do is take out the four bolts that are here that hold the extruders in place. So that's really quite simple. Just stick your Allen key in, start turning it, and, uh, and undo all four of them. In this case, I've cheated a little bit, so I couldn't find the original bolts for our maker bot. So uh, it might look a little bit different, but it's no different than and you'll be taking it apart at home. So we can take these bolts out. Be careful, there's two little spacers in there. So just put this all aside. You can leave the fan hanging off there until we do the actual upgrading portion. Okay, we do the same with the other side. Just take out the long extruder screws. And I like to undo them both slowly at the same time. That way they stay aligned for a little bit longer and are a little bit easier to take out. Okay, so once again. These guys are both loose. So you can pull it all outside. We'll take the heat sink off. Take the spacers off. Take the bolts out. Don't forget the fan protector back there. There we go. We can put it off to one side. And now we can start putting it all back together. So what we're going to do is, you first you're going to grab your uh, fan duct and just drop the new screws in, like so. Then take the new spacers, then take the new spacers and install them on, like so. And this is a right duct because it's got a cut like that, uh, that forms to the, um, oh shoot, my bad. So actually, first you put the bolts in, then you put the shield, then you put the fan. Make sure the sticker on the fan is forcing uh, away from you, as this is the direction that the air blows into, so like this. Then we can put on the spacers on both of the bolts, the new spacers that come with the kit. And we'll make these available as an STL file you can download as well. Then you can put a heat sink on, and you've got a whole sandwich assembly like this. So as you can see, it's the fan duct, then the fan blade protector, then the fan, then the spacers, and then the heat sink. And now we can go and just put it all back on as we have just done. So again, just slide it into the two holes in the heater block. Grab your Allen key for the cap head bolts and just screw it in nice and easy. Should catch pretty easily. If it doesn't happen to catch easily, then uh, I'd say try pushing down on your extruder and moving it around so it sits in the right place. Um, 
you know, and it shouldn't feel difficult. If it starts to feel difficult and you can't just twist it uh, without applying any force, you're doing something wrong and you might strip some threads. And if you strip some threads on the extruder motor, that would be a bit of a shame because you'd have to buy yourself a whole new motor uh, just because of the way that this system is constructed. And uh, so please be careful when putting it together and don't apply any undue force. Okay, so as we can see, we've put it all in, it's all tightened. The spaces are needed so that the heat sink still uh, sits on the heater block well and can actually draw away the heat. And you get to keep the fan protector so you're not going to damage any of the fan blades. So we just do the same thing with the other side. So again, I take my nozzle, stick the two bolts in, the two longer bolts that come with the kit, grab the fan protector and slide it on. Oops, to the two bolts. Slide it onto the two bolts. Take the fan again with the sticker facing away from where it's going to go. Slide that on. Then slide on the two spacers that go on like so. And then you can slide on your heatsink. So there we are. That's one little package again. And now we can go and install it. So it's really a rather simple uh, kit to install. It's what we wanted to do from the get-go uh, so that anybody at any level of maker bot printing can uh, start using this. Uh, it's been nice to have the PLA upgrade. I don't know how much experience you might have printing, but ABS is a bit of a pig to print with. And uh, you, well, all our no the only thing I really print in ABS actually is our nozzles uh, or these fan ducts. And I print them in ABS because that way I can heat the bed and uh, and they won't warp. Um, so if I'm printing an ABS part, for example, I don't need to take these nozzles off. They are, when I made them out of PLA the first couple times, they would warp and then they would uh, no longer work, touch the surface, because they're very, very close to the uh, printing surface, they'll warp and sag downwards and then start messing with your print, right? So again, we just take these, tighten them all the way, and you'll slowly feel them getting tighter and tighter. So we're almost there. And the other thing I'd say is take the filament out before you do this, out of both extruders. Uh, it just makes your life a little bit easier because sometimes the extruder motors won't sit in the right place unless you've uh, taken all the filament out. So... They are very long bolts. Okay. The other thing to note is that um, even though MakerBot sells their dissolvable filament as only working with ABS, that's actually not true. You can use it with PLA. Uh, I do it all the time. And it's quite nice actually when you use it on PLA because it doesn't attach itself to the PLA. So you can actually remove most of it without having to put it into the uh, removing liquid, the D-lemonine, um, which is nice because D-lemonine takes a little while to work and it can make your part feel a little bit slimy and some people don't like that super lemony smell that you get uh, off the D-lemonine. So these are the uh, fan uh, nozzles or ducts installed already. Uh, when you do install them, make sure afterwards to level the bed and that they're not touching on the bed. Uh, they should be you know, a millimeter or two higher than the tip of the nozzle. If they are a little low, just undo these bolts and try pushing up on the uh, ducts and that should uh, should allow you to, or that should position them so that they're not touching the uh, build plate anymore or they're slightly above the nozzle point. So then we can take the fans and two little bolts and simply take them and screw them in. So because I've used these fan ducts before uh, quite a lot, the screw will go in very easily, but obviously it's not a threaded hole. You thread it by forcing the screw into it the first time, so it's maybe easier to thread it uh, when the nozzle is not in, or the nozzle or the duct is not installed down there. 
as then you can easily, so let me show you that. So as you can see, there's the four holes here, and you just take those, uh, and that's where you install the screws as I'm doing right here. So let me zoom in on that a little bit. There we go. So just take this, screw it all the way in, and then do the other side. And again, just screw it all the way in. And when you're doing this, since it is just threaded into the plastic, be careful with it and don't don't over tighten it. There's no reason to over tighten it. If you're really afraid that it's not quite tight, then you can uh, you can give it a tighten after you've been printing for a couple of hours and if it's come loose at all. Alright, and then we can continue with the other fan. So again, uh, with the fans that we supply at least, uh, the air goes towards the sticker, so those have to be facing into the duct. And you know, just take your little bolts that come supplied, slip them in, and then using the uh, standard Allen key, you'll be able to tighten them up. in the holes that are in the bottom of the ducts. Okay, so one of the things that we did when designing this kit was make sure that the uh, electrical rating of the fans would not exceed what the MakerBot board can or uh, supply. And I did this by looking at what the uh, Replicator 2 uh, fan consumption or power consumption is and making sure that these fans are rated for less power consumption uh, combined than the one that goes onto the replicator too. Um, you're of course welcome to pick out your own fans. Uh, the spaced off of a 40 millimeter fan spacing. Um, the only thing I'd say is, you know, we have no warranty if you do decide to do anything like that. Right, so there you go. That's the two fans installed. And now all we have to do is install the wiring harness. So we'll work it backwards. And... So, as you can see, both of these fans would come with connectors that we pre-install. What I like to do is just twirl them around here. And I've already got this handy dandy zip tie from before. So, you can't happen to see. So I've got this handy dandy zip tie there. And I'm gonna put my connectors through it. And that'll hold these cables and uh, in place here. You can always loop them on the inside obviously but I just kinda like it out here. Make sure to give yourself a little bit of cable slack on the bottom. You don't want anything to get uh, damaged because the cable is too taut. Then you get your harness. The harness is pretty easy. It's got two connectors on it. The single connector goes into the uh, Mighty board or into the uh, the board on the bottom of the MakerBot and these two here are for the fans. If you buy one of our kits it's all plug and play. You can't mess it up as you can see the uh, connectors are keyed to the harness. So all you have to do is take it, slip one in, and then slip the other one in. Again, the um, the harness or the both fans will run at the same time, so it doesn't matter where you plug one in and where you plug in the other. And you can then just wrap the cable around the uh, how do you call it? The cable bundle that goes to the extruders once or twice. Let it drop down, and now we'll look at the bottom of the MakerBot. Alright, so this part is also pretty easy. There's four bolts in all of these places. You want to remove those so you can have access to the bottom of the MakerBot and see the uh, fan connector. So nice and easy. The only thing is that these darn bolts are so far up there. It's a bit tricky to get to. So, so I have a slightly larger Allen key than the one that came with the MakerBots, and that makes this job a lot, lot faster. Okay.
All right, so that's everything off here. And as you can see, you've got all your connections to the various motors and extruders and whatnot. So you can take your cable and it'll just have this one connector, right? So all you have to do is find this connector here. It's the empty, only empty one. And, you know, maybe uh, give yourself a little bit of cable relief like that, for example. Plug it in. Like so. And you are pretty much done. The only thing you need to do now to enable to, in order to be able to use your fan is either while you're printing, go into the settings and then you can turn the fans on and you'll see the two uh, fans that we just installed come on. Or when you're doing a print, you can either, if you select PLA on the Replicator 2X, it'll automatically turn on the fans or you might have to actually go in and make a custom profile that has the fans activated. Uh, again, this is pretty easy if you uh, go to make your own custom profile at the very top. There's a web link that takes you to the MakerBot website that explains all of the different settings and shows you how to uh, how to install, or sorry, how to change one of your slicer profiles so that it turns the fans on while printing. So that's it. Turn it on, give it a go, make sure the fans are working. If they're not working, then uh, I guess it's, it's probably most likely not an installation issue, just a wire that might be a little loose somewhere, or, or you haven't actually told the fans to come on. Alright, thank you for watching.